Hi everyone. Uh, before we start with the discussion of the frequency response of single stage MOS amplifiers, we'll first discuss how to find poles and zeros in these MOS amplifier circuits intuitively. So in this lecture, I'll mainly focus on finding zeros in MOS amplifier circuits using intuitions. So first we'll start with the definition of zero. So the definition of zero is that when you apply a non-zero input VI to an amplifier, a frequency dependent um, amplifier whose gain is a dependent on frequency, the output V0 will go to zero at some value of S equal to SZ. So then SZ happens to be a zero for the system. To solve this or to derive some very simple and intuitive conditions to find zeros um, in MOS amplifiers, we will go with the standard simplification of a MOS amplifier. So any MOS amplifier comprising of resistors and capacitors or even inductors can be represented as far as the load or the output is concerned, it can be represented as a current, I mean a voltage dependent current source in parallel with an output impedance Z out. Now both of these can be functions of frequency. So here I have uh, represented, I mean written GM, the transconductance as GM of S, which means the transconductance can also be a function of frequency which we will see in some circuits it will be ok. So or I can simply call this entire GMVI as I out. So I am representing uh, this I out is actually the short circuit current. So you short circuit the output and apply an input and measure the current. So that will be your I out. And ZL and Z out, ZL is your load impedance and Z out here is the output impedance of the amplifier measured by making input equal to 0. Okay, so this is the, I mean, again, this is something we are already aware of. Uh, we know how to find these parameters. We have, de we have de derived this for low frequency, uh, under low frequency conditions. So now we'll have to just apply the same procedure and derive it for higher frequencies as well. So now to find zero, you will just apply the standard definition. So that is your V0 is simply from this, uh, from the model, I can simply write it as Z out parallel ZL times I out. Now for the output to be 0 since it is the product of two quantities, if either one of the quantities is 0, we are going to get the output voltage also 0. Okay. So then first I will use this condition when I out is 0. If I out is 0, that is you know the if you derive the frequency dependent transconductance of the entire amplifier circuit should become 0 at some value of S equal to SZ. Now you should keep in mind at that value where your I out becomes 0, the output impedance time I mean in parallel with the load impedance so that is Z out parallel ZL should not be equal to infinity. So this condition has to be ensured. If it becomes infinity at that value of S equal to SZ, it means that there is also a pole there. So there will be a pole 0 cancellation and you won't have a 0 at that point. So the condition is output should I out should be equal to 0 but at the same value of S where the I out becomes equal to 0. Z out parallel ZL should not be infinity, it should not blow up to infinity. In a similar way, we will define the other condition is that if either Z out or ZL, either one of them goes to 0, then the overall impedance will go to 0 because they both are in parallel. But the condition we have to satisfy is that the I out current, the current that is the output short circuit output current should not be equal to infinity. Okay, So if it is equal to infinity then it means that uh, there is a pole at that point and the pole and zero will get cancelled out. So these are the two conditions that we will be using either I out becoming zero at some value of S equal to SZ or ZL or Z out becoming zero at some value of S equal to SZ. And you have to keep in mind when you are applying these conditions for the first condition when I out is zero at some value of S you have to ensure that Z out parallel ZL is not equal to infinity. And similarly, we should also ensure in the second condition when Z out is 0 or ZL is 0, I out should not be equal to infinity. So we will now apply these conditions and try to find zeros in simple MOS circuits. So the first circuit is a pretty standard circuit. So here uh, we have a capacitance C connected between the gate and drain. Okay, and it can be either modeling the gate to drain capacitor or it can be an intentional 
capacitor called the Miller capacitor which is normally used in uh, two stage common source amplifiers ok so now for this circuit we are supposed to find the zero so to find zero we will apply the first condition which is I out equal to zero will I out become zero at some value of s so here uh, R Z out for example if I ask you to find Z out for the circuit so we have to exclude RL and find the looking in impedance into the MOS by shorting VI ok so Z out will simply turn out to be I mean by now I think uh, we can very easily find all that so if you short circuit your gate you will just have the capacitor C I mean this is gate here so your capacitor C to ground and R naught will also come in parallel with it so your Z out will simply be R naught in parallel with C ok it's 1 by SC I'm sorry so that will be your Z out so now we know Z out we know ZL ZL is a it's just a resistor there is no frequency dependence in it so now we'll just find I out for this so to find I out we'll apply the standard definition so that is you keep your input active and short circuit the output so I out is measured by short circuiting the output and then finding the current that is flowing into that uh, the short circuited output node so the current here if you see there are two paths here the first path is through the capacitor C the second path is through the MOSFET so then your I out will simply be minus GMVI because I have shown the direction of I out in this direction GMVI flows from drain to source so there is a minus sign and plus VI by SC ok that's that follows uh, from a simple case here now the condition that we are going to use the first condition is I out equals 0 so by equating I out as 0 you get gm equals sz and sz into c and so zero frequency will simply be gm by c so this is actually a right of plane zero okay so intuitively what you can see here is that uh, at some frequency the current that actually if you see the output node v naught there are two paths for it so one path is through the capacitor from vi the input to the output the other path is through the MOSFET now there is one frequency one particular frequency at which the current that's ent through coming through the capacitor will become exactly equal to the current that's flowing through the MOSFET which is GMBI when that happens there will be no current flowing through the output node okay since no current flows through the output node I mean any if your input is finite at that frequency your load impedance is finite at that uh, value of s then the output V0 is going to be zero so using that we can find the uh, value at value of s at which uh, there will be a zero in the circuit ok so now one interesting property that we see in this problem is that uh, in this question is I mean in this specific problem is that when you have multiple paths to the output ok when there is multiple paths to the output from the input then there is a chance that you will have a zero so what I have shown here is a general representation of two transfer function h1 of s and h2 of s from input to the output so your output is input passed through the two transfer functions and then added at the output so whenever your input undergoes uh, it, 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 it actually passes through two different transfer functions and it's finally summed at the output then you will have zero provided you have to obey certain conditions the order of h1 so that is the number of poles in h1 and h2 should be different okay that condition has to be satisfied now even if you assume same order so that is if I assume the poles to be same in both h1 and h2 you will have zeros under some specific cases you may not have zeros I will talk about that specific case little later ok but generally if the order of h1 and h2 are different then you are bound to have zeros at the output so whenever there are multiple paths from the input to the output and if the orders of the paths happen to be different then you will have zeros at the output so again uh, to prove this we can take the pretty very very standard example let's say we have a potential divider circuit so where, where you have rc in parallel and a resistor here and uh, i mean if you're supposed to find zero uh, we have already discussed how to find for passive networks i can assume this impedance blowing up to infinity uh, you know then you, you that will be your the value of s for which that impedance blows up to infinity will be your uh, zero but you can also apply the same definition of two paths here so if you see 
there is two paths for current here one is through the resistor other is through the capacitor so that's why and both the paths uh, one since capacitor has a the impedance has a pole at dc and resistor doesn't have any pole the orders are different in both the paths okay so therefore you can expect a zero again we can apply the standard definition of zero that we have derived here so that is i'll just find the short circuit output current so i'll short circuit the output node and find the condition when i out goes to zero so that will simply be this impedance blowing up to infinity and that will happen at sz equals minus 1 by rc okay so but what, what i was trying to say here is there are two paths to the output here and that's why you're getting a zero the same thing had happened even in the previous example uh, there was one path through the capacitor and one path through the MOSFET and the frequency response of both the paths were different of, of the order uh, or the poles in both the paths were different. One path didn't have any pole at all which is the pole was at infinity, other path had a pole at zero. So therefore when you sum the two paths you ended up getting a zero at a finite value of s. Now I spoke about one specific case that is if the poles are different okay so i said that when you add two paths you are bound to get a zero at the output if the order is different okay so that are the number of poles in this path is different from number of poles in this path but then i also said that even if the order is same i mean even if the even if the both the paths contain same number of poles as long as the poles are different okay if the poles are different we can still have zeros but under some specific conditions that may not hold true so i've taken an example here the pole in this system is at s equal to minus a and this system is at s equal to minus b and i've multiplied this system with a coefficient of minus one and i've added the two transfer functions now if you see here there is no zero in this transfer function now if i multiply it with any other coefficient instead of minus one any other value i'm going to get a zero so that's what i meant by in under some specific conditions even if the poles are different in the two paths, I may not end up having a zero. Okay, but otherwise, generally, whenever you have two paths adding up together at the output, you will have a zero. So now the next problem is a standard common source amplifier. We have just connected a capacitor at the output node, and we are supposed to find a zero for this circuit. To find the zero. Uh, we have to I mean, see the condition that your ZL becomes infinity, oh, sorry, ZL becomes zero or Z out becoming zero. Okay. Now, for, first we'll see I out here. So, I out here is simply GM times VI minus of GM times VI and that's never going to be equal to zero. So, that condition doesn't hold. So, we'll not be using that condition. The other condition is ZL equals zero or Z out is zero. Either one of them going to zero at some value of S. Z out is simply R naught in this example. Uh, so you can short the input and find the output impedance looking at the drain terminal. Okay. So if I ignore all the device parasitics, parasitics it's simply going to be R naught. And ZL is a pure capacitor here. And that will go to zero at infinity, infinite frequencies. So there is no finite zero in the circuit. This circuit uh, is again it, it, it's more like a common drain amplifier. So for this circuit, we have a capacitor C connected between gate and source. And we are supposed to find a zero in the circuit. So again, we'll go with the standard procedure. First, we'll find I out and try to equate it to zero. So if you try to find I out, so again, you can see there are two paths here. One is through the capacitor and the other path is through the MOSFET. Okay. And even if you consider, uh, right now, let's just ignore, uh, or even if I consider lambda not being equal to zero or R naught is finite. So the moment we assume uh, output node to be at zero volts, so there will be no current through R naught. So R naught and R will not figure in here. Okay. So if you use this condition to find I out, I out will simply be, will be equal to GM times VI because VI will now appear entirely across VGS. So GM times VI plus VI in into SC, it will be equal to zero. So if you equate that equal to zero, then you get the value of S where the zero occurs will be simply minus GM by C. Okay. 
Now we'll try to find other conditions. So which is Z out equal to zero or Z L equal to zero. So Z L is simply a resistor here. So that will never go to zero. So that condition cannot be used here. The other condition is Z out equal to zero. Z out here is simply one by GM parallel R naught. So there is R naught here as well. One by GM parallel R naught in parallel with one by SC. So you'll actually see R naught a capacitor C and one by GM, all three of them in parallel. Okay, but if you want to find a frequency at which it's going to go to zero, capacitor, I mean, that will happen when your capacitive impedance is zero. And that only happens at infinite frequency. So, so there is no finite value of S for which your Z out will go to zero. So there is only one zero in the circuit, which will happen at minus GM by C. So it's a left of plane zero. So now, uh, instead of a capacitor C, I have now placed an inductor L between gate and source. So here, this in this example, I wanted to show one of the cases where, uh, you know, uh, the second example, that is when your Z out becomes, I mean, sorry, the second case or, or the second condition for deriving a zero, which is Z out equals zero, but you should ensure that I out not being infinity at that point. So I wanted to take, I mean, one example, to show where this condition occurs. Okay, so that's why I just put an inductor in between gate and source here. So we are supposed to find the zeros for this circuit. So I'll start with the standard conditions. So first, we'll go for I out equal to zero. So if you measure I out, you can directly write this by now. So your output node will be at AC ground. So it is at AC ground. So if you find the I out, it's simply VI into GM plus so the GM into VI, which is the current flowing through the MOSFET and VI by SL is the current through the inductor. So you add the two currents. So they both are in the same direction. So they'll add up and equate it to zero. So then the zero will simply be GM times L. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. So the zero will simply be one by L GM. Okay, so this is the value of zero using the first condition, which is I out equal to zero. Now, if I try to using the second condition, is Z out equal to zero? So will that happen at all? So now, if you see Z L is a simple resistor R L, so that's never going to go to zero at any frequency. So we can't use that condition. The other condition is Z out becoming equal to zero. So if we, how, how do we measure Z out? You ground the input and measure the output impedance seen at the source terminal. So if you see at the output, your inductor is going to be, a, so the output impedance is going to look like this. You'll have an inductor and a resistance of value one by GM parallel or not. Okay, you're looking into the source with gate grounded. So the impedance is going to be one by, GL in, one by GM in parallel with or not. So, but if you look at this circuit now, at S equal to zero, the output impedance will go to zero. So can we say, is there a zero at S equal to zero? So that's when we have to see what happens to I out in that at that value of S. So at that value of S first, I mean, we have already derived an expression for I out here. So which is, uh, you know, S L G M plus one by S L. So that's what we have derived here. So using that, we can directly see that at S equal to zero, your I out will actually become infinity. So from that condition, we can say that, okay, there is actually no zero here because we are violating the second condition. Okay. The second condition is that your Z out or Z L can be zero, but you have to ensure that I out is not infinity at that point. So, but here it happens to be infinity. So therefore there is no zero at S equal to zero. You can even see that intuitively what happens at S equal to zero is that inductor will behave like a short circuit. So therefore your output is now going to, uh, your input is now going to appear across a short circuit. So therefore, the current that's going to be drawn from the input will actually be infinity. So that's why I out will also be infinity. The current flowing through the inductor is going to be infinity. So which implies I out is infinite infinity as well. Okay, so this is an intuitive way of looking at it. Uh, anyway, showed that, you know, in a, I mean, directly from uh, the equation that we derived for I out. Okay, either ways we can see that your I out becomes equal to infinity at S equal to zero. So therefore there is no zero at S equal to zero. 
okay the next circuit is a source degenerated mos amplifier where we have two impedances connected one at source and one at drain here and we are supposed to find the zero for this circuit now in this specific problem i have assumed lambda to be zero where r not is actually infinity so since r not is infinity z out will actually be infinity so if you look into the drain th there is no connection between drain to gate or drain to source so i can see that you know i can intuitively say that there is no even if i change my drain voltage there will be no change in the drain current so therefore z out will be infinity okay so there is only zl here so which is uh, will zl go to zero at any value of s it will go to zero if your capacitive impedance becomes zero and that will happen at s equal to infinity so the second condition happens only at s equal to infinity but so there is no finite zero uh, using this second condition so now we'll try to use the first condition which is can i have i out going to zero at any value of s what happens if you look at this circuit intuitively if at some frequency this impedance r in parallel with c becomes infinity then you will have your source node floating i mean the source node is open right now under that condition because your source node is open no current can flow through this source so which means no current can flow through drain as well so in that point your i not i out will become equal to zero okay and the value at i mean the value of s at which this parallel capacitor and resistor will become equal to infinity will simply be i mean we can compute that using 1 by sc equals minus r so your zero will be minus 1 by rc okay so you intuitively we can see that when i out actually goes to zero at that point if your source impedance here blows up to infinity then that can happen i mean of course you can derive a direct expression and show that see we already know uh, for example if you are given if you are given a common source amplifier with source degeneration say an impedance zs here we know the effective transconductance is given by gm by 1 plus gm zs so we can equate this to zero and find the condition uh, under which we are going to get a zero we can equate it and get the derive the expression but we can use i mean we can use intuition as well and see under, under what conditions uh, you will actually get a zero okay it, in this problem it happens to be the condition where your source impedance uh, blows up to infinity so that's the point where your drain current will become zero so therefore your zero will be at minus 1 by rc so the other condition we have already discussed happens at zl equal to zero which happens at infinite frequency so there is no i mean using the second condition we don't get a finite zero so there is only one zero in the circuit which happens to be at minus 1 by rc so finally we'll take one example uh, where i wanted to show that when you have two paths you end up having a zero uh, just i mean a slightly modified example uh, in this case we have a cascade of two common source amplifiers and a capacitor c connected between input and output okay we, we are not worried about the stability of the circuit and all that just we are given a circuit like this and we are supposed to find a zero for this so i'll use this condition i'll uh, short circuit the output and try to measure the short circuit output current i out so one path is through the capacitor it's going to be vi by 1 by sc so it will be vi into sc the other path is through the mosfet so the first stage gain is going to be minus gm r not times vi so multiply it by gm now this current is going to be see uh, this current so this is your gate voltage gate to source voltage is negative so you'll actually have this current flowing from source to drain so this current is going to be gm square r not times vi so gm into gm r not so it's gm square r not times vi so you add the two currents and the zero happens to be a left of plane zero which will be minus gm square r not by c so if both the currents are in the same direction you know from the input to the output if both the currents through the, through the different frequency dependent paths okay if the direction of current is same then you will mostly have a left of plane zero if the direction of currents are different then you will have a right of plane zero so that's what happened in our first example uh, in a common source amplifier we had two paths where one was through a capacitor 
and the other one was through the MOSFET but the directions were different okay so one was flowing to, into the output node where one the other one was flowing away from the output node so that's why we we actually got a right of plane zero there so that's it so this is about finding zeros in uh, mos amplifier circuits the next lecture i'll discuss how to find poles in mos amplifier circuits using intuitive conditions